Morning, everyone. I want to welcome you all, our children and then parents and our friends and the neighbors from our lovely community Newbridge and my dear sisters and brothers in Christ to this uh, very last Sunday morning online family service in year 2020. I hope and pray that you and your family had a joyful and peaceful Christmas. And uh, today, as we are in the last Sunday of uh, year 2020, I can't believe we are in the last Sunday. Well, I mean, time flies. And I feel that, you know, 1st of January, some of brothers and sisters gathered here with me and, in this, you know, started our reading whole Bible. I feel like that day, you know, was like two months ago. But already we are heading to the end of the year 2020. So today, with all this wonderful, you know, theme of Christmas, you know, we have taken into our heart the you know, peace and the hope and the joy and the love and the light of the world. And we will look back what God has done, you know, in this year. And we will look forward, you know, to see God's even greater blessing and the greater work of salvation in our lives and in our church ministry. So shall we bow down our head and let's pray and give thanks to God. Almighty God and our gracious Father in heaven, we come before you with our heart of praise and worship to you for all the great things you have done in our lives and in your church and in, your, in our community and in this nation, Wales and all around the world. And the Father, we thank you for who you are. You are not only the creator of heaven and earth, but you are our gracious Father in heaven, who is full of righteousness and truth and mercy. Father, we thank you for that joyful in the season of Advent and Christmas. We truly celebrate it with the, that true meaning of Christmas, the true hope and peace and joy and love and light of, light of the world our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, after we celebrate this Christmas, now to this morning we are gathering here to remember the great things you have done throughout all this year, 2020. So fill our hearts with joy and gladness and gratitude, and we will open our mouth and we will lift our innocent hands to give you all the praise and glory for the great work of salvation you have done. Father, we are opening our heart and our mouths and the ears and our souls, and we are seeking our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is standing amongst us. So come, Holy Spirit, upon us and help us to find Jesus and hear his word, and then help us truly give all the praise and glory to you, and then fix our eyes on Jesus, and continuously follow him, and then continuously proclaim the name of Jesus to people in this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand up and joyfully sing this wonderful song, Days of Elijah.
praise the Lord. Now it is time we joyfully invite our, our auntie part to come and give a lovely children's story. Shall we call Auntie Pat joyfully? Auntie Pat, where are you? Good morning, children. I hope you've all enjoyed your Christmas. Did you remember to say happy birthday to Jesus? Do you know, not everyone was happy that Jesus had been born. King Herod was very angry. He was very upset and sent soldiers to find the baby Jesus and kill him. But God knew what King Herod was planning. And in a dream, he told Joseph to take the baby Jesus and Mary his mother and go to another country called Egypt. Now, that part of the story is true. It's in the Bible. This next part is a story it's called The Legend of the Spider's Web. A legend is a story that is passed down from generation to generation. But it could be true. When Jip, Mary and Joseph were on their way to Egypt, so the story runs, as the evening came, they were very tired and looking for somewhere to stay. Now they knew the soldiers wouldn't be far behind them. So they couldn't go to an inn or anything, but they saw a cave and so they went in there. Now it was very cold because this time of the year is, is like ours when we, it gets cold. And to get the frost as well, it's very cold. And in the side was a little spider and he saw the baby Jesus and he thought, what could I do to keep baby Jesus warm? Well, what do spiders do best? They spin a web, don't they? And so that's what he did. And he spun his web all over the entrance of the cave. And so that kept the cold out as well. So they were nice and cozy inside. Well, not long, no long, you could hear along the road came the soldiers. And they came to the cave and they were just going to burst in. And then they saw the web and it was covered with the frost. And, and, and so it was white with frost covered over. But it looked even more pretty. And then the captain shouted, no, no need to go in there. If anyone was inside, the spider's web would have been broken. So they went on down the road. So that was really good, wasn't it? Well, that's why it's at Christmas time on our Christmas trees. Do you put something like this on? Tinsel? Yeah? And so the story goes, this is why we put tinsel on our trees, because it reminds us of the story of the spider's web. And so, as I said, um, it could be true. It's a story, but it could be true because God can do anything, can't he? And he can use anybody or any creature. And so it is a lovely little story, though, isn't it? And so I love to tell that one every year. But no gift that Jesus receives, and that gift was from the little spider, wasn't it? He knew, did what he knew best. And so no gift that you give to Jesus is ever forgotten. My children. Working for Christ in the community. These are the announcements this week at Tabernacle Baptist Church, Newbridge. This week we will have a time of rest from the ministries of daily devotion dancing through quarantine and online fellowship. Please join our online Bible study, learning lessons from a great cloud of witnesses with Pastor Peter Cho every Wednesday at 6.30pm. Once every fortnight on Thursday at 7pm for 7.30pm, there is an online deacons meeting. Please note that this is only for the diaconate of Tabernacle Baptist Church Newbridge. 
Join us for our Sunday online services. At 11am we have our Sunday morning family service and at 6pm we have our Sunday evening preaching service. Every Sunday afternoon we have our online Sunday school. Children aged 10 plus can join from 2pm, whilst children aged 5 to 9 can join us from 3pm. Please contact Pastor Peter or Lynn Champion for more information and the invitation email. Last but not least, please protect the NHS and each other by social distancing, washing your hands and in doing so, save lives. Please pray for the global COVID-19 pandemic, national leaders, NHS and key workers, the sick, people in tears and God's church and people. Stay safe, God bless and thank you. Thank you, Auntie Pat, for not only for today's you know, uh, children's story, but all children, lovely, lovely children's story you have a uh, Share with us this year, 2020. May the Lord continuously bless you and strengthen you and bless your family and then all you do for the Lord as a well-watered garden. Amen. Amen. On the top of uh, our coming uh, ministry of the week, I'd like to share with you a couple of uh, announcements. You know, firstly, funeral service of uh, Barry Barnes. Uh, part, the partner of our sister Melanie, who is a, a daughter of a, our member of Tabernacle Library, Sylvia Williams. The funeral service of Barry Barnes will be held in Tabernacle Newbridge on Wednesday, 30th of uh, December, quarter past 11, 11.15 11, a.m., followed by cremation service at Grant Crematorium at half past 12. The funeral service of our sister Jean Williams will be held at the Grand, Grand Crematorium Monday, 4th of January, 4 p.m. We are going through a very critical time with the COVID-19, as I share with you on Christmas um, service. So please stay home as much as you can and continuously pray for people who are suffering. And they also going to pray for God's protection upon you know, you know, people around us, uh, around us and also people in this, this nation and all around the world. And also remember and pray for those who are mourning after they have a lost beloved one, you know, as uh, Michael and then his family, and also and Melanie and our sister Sylvia Williams and the family and Alan and the family. And let's bow down our head and then pray to God. For those who are sick and in tears and in need. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you with the need of healing upon those who are suffering many different ways. Lord, Lord, we bring the name of Lara Champion and her father, Alan. And we also pray for our brother, Ray, and our sister, John Martin, and their daughter, Lisa, and our brother, Ted, and Sacha, and Julie Walker's father, Ronald Walker, Daphne, and Helen Whitney, and then Jean Hardwick. And also we pray for Maria Jones and Sandra, and Sharon, and also Sarah, our sister Paul Williams' relative, and Shane's grandma, Mary Pierce. Lord, we ask you to shine your light of healing upon them, and heal them, and even make them stronger than before with your mighty hand. Lord, we continuously pray for those who are mourning after they have lost their beloved one, we bring the name of Michael and his family. And we also bring the name of Melanie and our sister Sylvia Williams and her family. And we pray for Alan and his family too. Lord, we ask you to put your loving arms around them and comfort them and strengthen them. And through this time of bereavement, that they may find Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Lord, we thank you for your answer for our prayer. As we cry out to you for the trade deal between EU and the UK, 
Now you have moved the heart of EU leaders and also our um, Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the EU deal has come out. But Father, there's a long way to go. We ask you to continuously bless those who are serving this in this, you know, Brexit to be done. And uh, let this Brexit, Brexit to be blessing for the in the both citizens of EU and the UK. Lord, we could just thank you for our NHS heroes and the carers and the teachers and all key workers. Even you know, some of them even you know, work so hard in this, you know, on Christmas Day. Lord, we ask to remember how they have uh, so faithfully served people in this nation, even putting with putting their life at a risk. And we ask you to you know, protect them under your wing and bless them and strengthen them with uh, your mighty power. Lord, we remember and pray for those who are uh, mourning and the suffering and dying under poverty all around the world and the people in this nation and in our community. As we have seen, there have been so many families struggling even to feed themselves. So come to Food Bank. Lord, we ask you to bless them and be with them. And then we also remember and pray for those who have lost their job and business due to COVID-19 pandemic. Lord, provide them what they need. And we ask you to touch their life with your love so that people in the world who don't know Jesus yet may be able to humble before you and then find Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior. Lord, help us to continue to put our hope in our Lord Jesus Christ alone and then continuously in us, you know, follow him and also continuously you know, proclaim the gospel for extension of your kingdom and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, amen, amen. Now it's time I want to share with you a very short video clip of uh, our life and church ministry of uh, 2000. 20. Well, some of uh, you, brother, sister, may think, oh, so what can you share? You know, we all have been under lockdown. But still, God has done another you know, amazing work of uh, salvation. So let's watch this video clip of uh, our life and church ministry of uh, year 2020. Thank you.
Shall we give all glory to God? Pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. Wow. In the midst of this, in the in time of darkness, God has done a lot, isn't it? So we thank God for the faithfulness. We will continue to put our trust in Him and continue our journey of faith in New Year 2021. I'd like to share with you a message from the um, this scriptures um, from the Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 10. Apostle Paul's second episode to Corinthian church, chapter 12, verse 1 to 10. I must go on boasting, although there is nothing to be gained. I will go unto vision and the revelation from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was uh, in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise. He heard in expressible things, things that man is not permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weakness. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say to keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, they would give me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weak, uh, weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong. May the Lord bless reading of his word. Amen. Amen. It is our blessing when we go around the world or meet people from different parts of the world and they learn different cultures. But at the same time, we are sometimes very surprised that there are some common grounds throughout all different cultures in the world. And I have found that personally among those common grounds throughout the world, in the, throughout all different in the cultures, a lesson about the importance of uh, humility is the one of the most frequent one I have found from different cultural backgrounds. May I introduce a story from an ancient Greek story? Have you heard uh, this genuine, you know, genius uh, sculptor and also inventor, Daedalus and his son Icarus' story? This is one of the most well known Greek ancient stories, which has a historical record in detail as well. Daedalus was a highly regarded genius sculptor and also inventor in Greek history. And, you know, actually a palace building and uh, some famous sculptures made by Daedalus are still in the country as uh, important heritages. With all these historical evidences, 
proving he really existed and did good works for his countries. But when his relationship with his king in Greece went apart, Daedalus and his son Icarus were imprisoned in a great maze Daedalus made. Daedalus could see that flying, flying was the only way he and his son Icarus could escape from that imprisonment. Genius Daedalus managed to create massive and gigantic wings using branches of a tree, connected, with, connected them with wax. He taught his son Icarus how to fly, but also warned him to keep away from the sun because the heat would make the wax melt, destroying the wings. Daedalus and his son Icarus managed to escape from the prison and they flew to the sky free. However, although he was warned by his dad, Daedalus, Icarus, the son, was too young and too enthusiastic about the flying. He got so excited by the thrill of flying and carried away by the amazing feeling of freedom and started flying high to solo to the sun and then diving low to the sea, then up high again. Icarus felt that he could reach up to the heaven as people who felt the top of Babel desired to do. So he tried to fly higher and higher. His father, Daedalus, was trying in vain to make a young Icarus to understand that his behavior was so dangerous. And Icarus soon saw his wings melting. Icarus fell into the sea and drowned sadly. The Icarian Sea, where he fell, was named after him. And there is also a nearby small island called Icaria. The lesson from this ancient Greek story is do not try to fly too high or you may face very bad end. This reminds a saying in our modern world about the social ladder. Don't try to climb up social ladder too high. As you go up and up and higher, higher on the ladder, and then you put yourself to danger to get more and more serious injury when you fall from the social ladder. In the Bible passage this morning, Paul talks his an amazing spiritual experience. He was caught up to the paradise and experienced inexpressible things. And his testimony sounds amazing. But his purpose to share his incredible spiritual experience of a vision and the revelation from the Lord was clear. Number one. He wanted to give a, a proof of uh, his apostleship to the Corinthian Christians and also against people who tried to diminish his apostleship. Secondly, he would like to share about the God's mighty power and the greatness of uh, God's revelation. Thirdly, with these two purposes, you know, Paul would like to keep the God's divine order among the Cor Corinthian Christians. Apostle Paul's purpose to give his testimony about amazing spiritual experience was uh, nothing to boast about himself and his you know, spiritual experience to others. But we can see the evidence of this, he didn't share that spiritual experience to both himself. We can see the evidence of, evidence of this. Number one, 
Paul talked about the experience like a someone else experience. So people would not pay attention on him or even praise him. As Paul said in verse 6, I refrain so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. Second evidence is from the beginning, Paul clearly started that the vision and the revelation he experienced was from the Lord. Twice. He talked about it twice. You know, with the saying, I don't know, but God knows. So turn people's eyes to God, not upon himself. The last evidence you know, you know, Paul did not you know, share that spiritual experience to both himself, is at the last, Paul even boasted his weakness with mentioning a thorn in his flesh. Before the second letter of Paul to Christian in Corinth, Paul had written his first letter to them because there was a serious division in the church by people's boasting over their spiritual gifts. They tried to boast what an amazing spiritual gift they had, spiritual supremacy over other Christians, so caused, quarreled, and split in the church. By contrast, Although Paul had experienced in this, you know, amazing spiritual in this, you know, experience of the paradise and the inexpressible revelation that man is not permitted to tell, he tried to turn people's attention and praise to God. And then even he boasted his weakness for that with mentioning a thorn in his flesh. As uh, today is our last Sunday of the year, we are looking back what God has done in our lives and in our church and all around the world. And what has happened in this world this year? And along with the suffering and hardship, we have gone through this year and the global pandemic with the COVID-19. God has opened the new ways to reach out more people with the love and the good news of Jesus through our newly launched online ministry. Now, for instance, you know, for our church YouTube account, we got 121 subscribers so far. Means that in you know, 121 people wanted to join our online service regularly. And then we thank God. You know, God has opened the way we can serve in the people in need in our community throughout our in a, in a joint service with the Pondside Community Food Banks. What's more, we have uh, you know, two more new people in our church, our sister Susan Frampton and Jane Lawrence. You know, they would newly join our church and we thank God for that. We should give you know, all thanks and praise and glory to God for the great things he has done in the midst of this unprecedented time of difficulties in our generation. As the Bible says, you know, whether we eat or drink, whatever we do, we should do all of that for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Another important lesson we learn from Apostle Paul is we can give thanks God in all circumstances, even in the time of suffering, as God's grace is always, always sufficient for us. Amen. Amen. Paul has been assumed to have a serious illness. As he, you know, he mentioned about a thorn is in his flesh in today's Bible passage. There have been many different opinions about you know, what sort of illness 
Paul suffered. But majority believes that he suffered either eye disease or epilepsy, according to what it says in the Bible. But Paul himself concluded, why God allow the suffering in his life and the ministry like this in verse 7, to keep me from becoming constituted because of this uh, surpassingly great revelation. There was uh, given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment him. The word torment, Paul used show how the illness he was suffering caused severe pains and trouble in his life and also church ministry. It is not only Paul had a suffering, but other great servants of the Lord, such as John Calvin. Can you believe that this one of the greatest theologians, John Calvin, he suffered over 20 different names of uh, disease. God allowed that, as Paul says, to keep, you know, he's in the great servant from becoming constituted. And then, Keep them be humbled before God. Paul believed that God allowed physical suffering to him, keep him being humbled before the Lord because God so loved him, so wanted to use him continuously and bless him through his humility. How many different places of the Bible talk about our humility is a wonderful way to get the God's blessing continuously. As our Lord Jesus Christ said in this, you know, whoever exalted himself will be humbled, and whoever humbled himself will be exalted. Amen. Amen. Well, so when Paul asked in, this, in the God, when Paul pleaded God to get rid of his son in his flesh, third time, God said, my grace is sufficient for you. That is why Paul said that. He delight in weakness. What is grace? What is grace? God's free gift given to us who do not deserve it at all. God's grace is uh, at the heart of uh, what we are, as uh, Paul said. You know, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And we are not saved because of our good personality or character or good work, but only by the grace of God, so then no one can boast. Regardless, we like it or not, God's grace is lavished upon us abundantly every day. In a way, God's Good will and purpose is done in our life and church ministry. As Paul said to Christian in Rome, we know in all things God works for good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. Recently, I have heard some brothers and sisters in Christ saying, I know God's will is uh, still there. God's good will is still there in this global pandemic with COVID-19. But as uh, I've seen so many people have suffered and died, sadly, the death, n- number of deaths with COVID-19 in UK has uh, passed 70,000. And then they said, even in this, I and my family have gone through hardship and difficulties. I felt so hard to be grateful to God. I always say, thank you for your very honest. The Bible clearly says, give thanks in all circumstances, because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Jesus. If our thanksgiving is determined by whether I have in a, you know, what I want, our sinful desire makes us to, it's uh, impossible to obey 
it is God's word and God's will. However, if who God is and his amazing grace pouring upon us sufficiently and abundantly every day become the reason for our thanksgiving. Yes, we can thanks to God in all circumstances, although we go through time of struggling and suffering and hardship in our lives and in our church ministry. When we see what has happened through the pandemic, global pandemic, through these eyes of faith, we can find so many things to give God, to thank, especially many people in the world have been humbled before the Lord. So the numbers of sales of a Bible has gone up dramatically in this country and all around the world. And the more and more unbelievers in the world have joined churches, online services, and the ministries. How about us, we Christians? Christians have been humble too. When our church was you know, closed by our government in this you know, lockdown regulation, only thing we could do was kneel down before the Lord and then cry out to him and ask him to guide us what to do in the midst of a darkness. And God has uh, helped us and God has guided us. So we thank God with a reminding of, reminder of the, the word in the Bible, in the Samuel, after he and the people of Israel had a you know, massive victory over their enemies, he, he sat in the stones and called the place Ebenezer. Thus far has God helped us. Amen. Amen. So we celebrate Ebenezer. Thus far has the Lord helped us. I've been surprised to hear this story that during the time of Roman Empire rule over the world. When some powerful you know, generals or emperors were parading through massive crowd welcoming them with the floral leaves flying in the air because of their triumph in the war. There was a slave in their chariot with a job to whisper in their ears, remember, you too are mortal. Yes, we too are mortal. It is an undeniable fact that what we have gone through with COVID-19 this year is unprecedented difficulties and hardship for this generation. But COVID-19 may be like a, the slave whispering in the ears of a general or Roman emperor. What, through what you know, COVID-19 God is speaking to us is we are also mortal. And then you know, so, you know, people in the world who are rejecting God because they want to be, the, be the God themselves or Lord in themselves, in their lives, you know, they are reminded we all are mortal. And without Jesus, no man in the world knows where our life is going. Without Jesus, no man in the world, when we die and when we finish our journey of life in this world, where we are going. So more and more people, hopefully, you know, would be humbled before the Creator and come to Christ and find Him as their personal Lord and Savior and then have an eternal life. Amen. Amen. We Christians also should find that even in the midst of such a time like this, God's grace has been sufficient for us so we can delight in our weakness so that our boasting in weakness keep us from becoming conceited before the Lord. And God's abundant blessing will be upon us continuously. Finally, as Paul said, as the 
last sentence in today's you know, passage, when we are weak, then we are strong. The world encourages people to show how strong and clever they are to get power and authority over other people. By contrast, when the follower of Jesus acknowledge our weakness before the Lord, you know, we will rely on him more and more. And then as we rely on him more and more over his help, with obedience to his will, our life and the ministry will be filled with the power of God more and more. There are so many stories in the Bible as a references for this. But the perfect example is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who said this in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, if it is possible, may this cup be, cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. The author of a book of Hebrews said Jesus did this prayer at the Garden of Gethsemane with a loud cries and tears. Then in the eyes of man, he just died powerlessly on the cross of Calvary. However, there was God's mighty power upon him to forgive the sin of the world, so destroy the world of a hostility between man and God and man and man, so bring peace and reconciliation between man and God and man and man. Also, what's more, it God's powerful hand raised Jesus from the dead and opened the way of eternal life to all who believe in Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, we are heading to the end of uh, this long and unprecedentedly difficult and hard year, 2020. In the midst of a chaotic and a dark tunnel of the global pandemic with the COVID-19 we have gone through, God's grace has been always sufficient for us. That he has opened the eyes of man in the world, how weak we are and how powerless we men are, even before one invisible virus called COVID-19. So let's hope and pray that in the new year 2021, more and more people in the world will be humbled before the Lord. And more and more people in the world will experience that amazing grace and an agape love from heaven. And then be humbled before the Lord and open their heart and accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. We Christians also have found our weakness during this uh, global pandemic with the COVID-19. So we could have cried out to God and we could in a sense, try to rely on God more and more so that Christ's power may have rested upon us. That's why as uh, we are heading to our new year 2021, with the living year 2020 behind. We can joyfully boast our weakness with the saying, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insult, in hardship, in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Shall we say, pray the Lord, even shout hallelujah. Hallelujah! Pray the Lord! Pray the Lord! This morning, I want to ask you how your life has gone through in this year, 2020. Have you found how weak you are? 
And have you found how powerless we men are? And I would like to ask you, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Our Lord Jesus Christ is calling you this morning. Through that, your discovery of how weak and how powerless we all men are, even under attack of this one invisible virus, coronavirus. So may I encourage you, as we all should do, may I encourage you to humble before the creator of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ, and open your heart and accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. And from the moment your life will be filled with the more and more almighty power of God. Is there anyone who used to believe in Jesus, but because of something happened in your life, you have uh, gone away from Jesus and his church? Our Lord is calling you also. Make a recommitment to the Lord. So if you are feeling, you know, Jesus is calling you, and you want to open your heart and accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, or make a recommitment. May I encourage you to close your eyes and do this simple prayer with me. Pray this just after me. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner. Forgive me all my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin and rose from death for my eternal life. So I open my heart and accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. Lead me, guide me into the way of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Amen. Pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. May the Lord bless you all who just accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And also those who make a commitment to the Lord Jesus again. Now, I'd like to so strongly advise you to be part of a local church near from you, Gospel Preaching Church, God's Word, God's Word Center, the church, Contact a local church like that, pastor or a leader of the church, and share with them you just gave your heart to the Lord or you just made your recommitment to the Lord. I'm sure they'll be thrilled to hear that and that they will love you and pray for you and then serve you too for your faith in Jesus to be nurtured. And of course, if you are around in the New World, you'll be more than welcome to contact me and one of our leaders in Tabernacle New Bridge, we will welcome you with opening our arms. And then we will continuously pray for you and serve you for your faith to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. Let's all stand up and joyfully sing to God be the glory, great things he has done.
let's pray for God's blessing upon us. Let's pray. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he walk in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. May the Lord bless you all and grant you the most blessed new year in year 2021. Shalom. Shalom. Come on now, join with me. Everybody sing. I'm going to lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give him everything, he's good in every way. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give him everything, he's good in every way. He is always there for us. He's good in every way. Pouring out his awesome love He's good in every way He fills us up with peace and joy He's good in every way He gives us all we need and more He's good in every way Come on now join, Come yeah. on now join with me Everybody sing I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise Mighty God and worthy of our praise.